Steve DeSanctis is one step closer to $50,000. Christy Garden, Doug Mertz, and Nancy McNeely are his challengers today on Run for the Money. And here's your host, Bill Rafferty. Thank you very much. Thank you. Everybody, welcome to Run for the Money. We've got some real excitement here. We start out every day with four players, and we play until one of them is crowned our daily champion. Yesterday, that champion was the man you've already met, Steve DeSanctis. Congratulations again. He is a three-time winner. Three-time winner with us at $5,000 a day. So that means right up till now, sir, you have won $15,000. That is not shabby at all. And as you know, if you become a five-time winner, and that's just two more wins for you, we will double your winnings to $50,000. A lot of stuff here. I know it's tough to do, Steve, but has it, is it starting to sink in that you've, you've got a lot of money now? Just a little bit. Yeah? Making, making new figures in my checkbook. <laughs> making, yeah. You're putting a lot of zeros on there, That's aren't right. you? Yeah. Uh, do you have any idea what you want to do with it? I'd like to spend it all. You like to spend it all? <laughs> you got to admire a man with a vision. That's what I said. Well, of course, there are three other players out here who have some other ideas about this. They are the competition. They are lean and mean and ready to go. We already had a quick look at them, but let's meet them right now. Nancy? Nancy McNeely from Helena, Montana. Doug, D Doug Mertz from Kansas City, Missouri. I'm Christy Godden from Albuquerque, New Mexico. All right, welcome to all of you. Good luck, players, because we're starting out with four, but only three are going to go on to our next round. I'm going to ask you questions worth one, two, or three points. As soon as you know the answer, hit your buzzer. Remember, we're looking for three winners here, the first three to reach the finish line with nine points. Hands on buzzers, players, because the run for the money begins now. First question is worth one. Celebrating its 200th birthday is the document which begins, Doug. The Constitution. The U.S. Constitution, which begins with the words, we the people name it, U.S. Constitution. The answer, Doug, gets one point. Next question is worth two. In April 1986, there was a major nuclear accident at this... Steve. Chernobyl. Chernobyl. That is correct. You pick up two. Next question is worth three. Since the year 1059, he has been elected by the College of Cardinals. Who is he? Doug. The Pope. The Pope is correct. You pick up three. <laughs> Doug now has four. Steve, two. Nancy and Christie yet to break the ice. We're looking for three players to reach the finish line. Because of its shape, what do we call the president's office in the... Christie. The Oval Office. The Oval Office. You get one point. More two players. What nation is home to a television network known by the initials... Christie. England. No. I'm sorry, that is incorrect, players. And known by the initials CBC. Doug. Canada. Canada is correct. You pick up two. Picks up two. Next question is worth three. If Doug gets it, Doug is in our second round. You're going to have to wait and find out. That's going to happen right after this. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. We're right in the middle of round one. We're looking for three winners to get into round two. Quick recap of the score. Let you know that uh, Nancy McNeely has yet to break the ice. We're waiting to hear from you, Nancy. Doug Mertz has uh, six. He's knocking on the door. Christy Gooden has one, and our returning champion, Steve, has two. He's a three-time winner. He's hoping to be a five-time winner and win $50,000. So a lot at stake for that young man right there. Next question is worth three. If Doug gets it, he's in a second round. Prince Charles and Princess Diana are the proud parents of two little princes. Nancy. William and Harry. William or Harry is what we were looking for. Correct. You get three needed points, Nancy. Two little princes. Give me the first name of either one. You gave me both. So we're going to give you three points. Next question is worth one. Mystery writers are awarded prizes called Edgars, which are named for the man, Doug. Poe. Edgar Allan Poe. That is correct. That's what we're looking for. Name for the man who wrote the first mystery novel. Edgar Allan Poe is the correct answer. You pick up one point. Next question is worth two for Doug. If he gets this right, he goes to our second round. After seven years, viewers were forced to say goodbye to TV cops Renko, Belka, and Ferrillo. Christy. Hill Street Blues. Hill Street Blues. That's what we're looking for. When this show was canceled, name it. Hill Street Blues was the answer. Christy picks up two. Next question is worth three. Possible win for Doug. What name was given to the commission appointed to investigate the Iran arms scandal? Ooh. Too much time, players. Tower Commission. Tower Commission was the answer there. Next question is worth one. 
A recent scandal has forced this couple to abandon their PTL empire. Doug, the Bakers. Jim, Jim and Tammy. Tammy Baker, yes, we will accept it. Jim and Tammy Baker, we now have eight. Built in the 14th century, this Italian landmark is expected... Steve. Leaning Tower of Pisa. Tower of Pisa is correct. It's expected to fall over in the 21st century. Name the leaning landmark, the Tower of Pizza. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Steve picks up two. Next question is worth three. Again, Doug knocking on the door here. Name the famous architect who designed New York's Guggenheim Museum. Doug Frank Owen. Lloyd Wright. Frank Lloyd Wright is right. <laughs> Nicely done. Nicely done. All right, Doug, the good news is you are off and running, sir. You are in our second round. Go on over and get in place. We're going to look for two more players to join you right now. And players, let me tell you, no more one-point questions. Uh, all the questions are going to be either two or three-point questions. Uh, close game going on right now, three, three, and four. As you can see, next question is worth two. Name the politician whose presidential ambitions were destroyed by his... Steve. Gary Hart. Gary Hart is correct for two. Were destroyed by his friendship with a woman named Donna Rice. Gary Hart was the answer. And now Steve has six. Next question worth three. If he gets it, our returning champ goes on to the second round. In Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, what was Juliet's family name? Christy. Capulet. Capulet is correct. Christy picks up three. It's tied between Steve and Christy right now. Next question is worth two. This black civil rights leader recently announced his second run for the presidency. Christy. Jesse Jackson. Jesse Jackson is correct. She takes the lead with eight. Here it is. Three points. Christy gets it. She goes to the second round. If Steve gets it, he goes to the second round. In 1941, Mohammed Reza Pahlavi became the Shah of what? Christy. Iran. Iran is right. country ran with the answer we were looking for christy did the job she had to do she is now in our second round christy head on over there with doug and get ready we're going to find fine go ahead you can go over there now get over there now and we're going to find another winner to join you next question is worth two at a recent auction a musician paid over seven hundred thousand dollars for a violin made by this legendary Steve. Stradivarius. Stradivarius is right. You get two. Steve now has eight. Steve is knocking on the door with eight. The next question is worth three. If he gets it, he goes. <laughs> Only one nation in the world has more Communist Party members than Russia. Name it. Steve. China. China is right. The championship. Nancy, we're going to have to say goodbye to you right now. You, uh, you were just a pleasure to have around on thank Run for you. the Money. We've got some nice gifts for you backstage, and thank you so much for being with us on Run for the Money. I enjoyed All right, myself. Steve, go on over and get in place. You can join uh, Doug and Christy. Second round action coming up right after this. Come on back. It gets exciting. And now back to Run for the Money and your host, Bill Rafferty. Thank you. Welcome back, everybody. We are just about ready to start our second round right now. We've got our three winners from our first round here. Uh, we met them a little bit in the beginning of the show, but I think we ought to get to know them a little bit better right now. As you know, Steve is our returning champion, three times a winner, and barely got in here. Steve, uh, <laughs> how did that feel? Uh, a little shaky there. Bill. Yeah, <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to get there, but you, you managed to pull it out. It's a lot of pressure, isn't it? It sure is. Yeah. Well, he's on his way, hopefully, to winning $50,000 We'll just have to see how he does in this. Christy, what do you do? I'm a receptionist. Very good. Nice yeah. to have you here with us today. Doug, what about you, sir? What do you do? I'm a waiter in a restaurant with an eye on someday having my own restaurant. Oh, well, maybe you'll be able to pick up a down payment here today. <laughs> like to Who knows? <laughs> okay, here we go with four in a row. We're looking for two winners here, and those two will fight it out head-to-head -head in our final round for $5,000. Now, this is our solo round where it's just you against the clock. Now, Doug, you got into this round first. Here are the four categories available in this round. We have presidents, movies of the 80s, around the world, and famous wives. Doug, pick one. Uh, famous wives, Bill. Famous wives is the yeah. category. Join me over here, please. Good luck. If you do well, you could be on your way to our final round. The category is famous wives. This is how it works. You'll score one point for each right answer, and your object is to score four in a row. Every time you miss a question, you go back down to zero. Right now, let's put 40 seconds on the clock. You'll have the whole 40 seconds to try and get those four in a row, and if you fail, you'll get credit for your highest run. Are you all set? I'm ready. Famous wives. Time begins 
now. In real life, she's the wife of Gary Morton, but on TV, she was Mrs. Lucy McCarty. Yes. In 1984, the wife of Jean de Zaccaro made history when she ran Geraldine for vice Ferraro. president. Yes. America's most famous wife is the actress whose many husbands include Eddie Fisher and Dick Mrs. Milton. Mrs. Taylor. Yes. In 1980, a jockey named Robin Smith became the Fred wife Astaire. of this. Yes. Four in a row. <laughs> Didn't miss one. Did not miss one. Hey, Doug, you don't do better than that. You got four in a row. Go on back over there and let's see how the other players do. Christy, it's your turn. Pick your category, please. Um, movies of the 80s. Movies of the 80s. Come and join me over here, Christy. You're on your way to uh, four in a row, hopefully, because you got your work cut out for you. The guy that went before you was a wizard. Here we go. Movies of the 80s. Time begins now. Name the TV star who recently took a movie trip back to the future. Michael J. Fox. Yes. Name the Australian actor who starred as Crocodile Dundee. Paul Hogan. Yes. What lovable little creature was described as alone, afraid, three million light years away? E.T. Yes. For what 1981 film did Jack Nicholson earn an Oscar nomination for his role as Eugene O'Neill? I don't know. All right. If, in Raiders of the Lost Ark, who was the daring archaeologist played by Harrison Ford? Indiana Jones. Yes. Name the sexy actor who starred in Lethal Weapon and Road Warrior. Mel Gibson. Yes. She starred with her real-life boyfriend in the hit movie Children of a Lesser God. Name her. Marilee... I'm sorry. Name the 1985... I'm sorry. You didn't get four in a row. But you did get three. And I think you've got a shot here. You're going to have to go back over there, Christy, and wait it out and see what happens with Steve. Go on back over there. She starred with her real-life boyfriend in the hit movie Children. You knew this one. This was uh, Marley Matlin. That was what we were looking for. And uh, 1981 film did Jack Nicholson earn an Oscar nomination for his role as Eugene O'Neill. Reds. That's what we were looking for there. All right, Steve, it's your choice. Which category, sir? I'll take presidents, please. Presidents. Come on over here, champion. He's trying to repeat. He's got to get to this end round. He's got to get to our final round in hopes of trying to win $50,000. This is an important shot. And Steve, to guarantee... A chance at our final round. You have to get four in a row. Here we go. Presidents is the category. Time begins now. Name the only U.S. president who has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I don't know. Too much time. Only two of our presidents were born in Texas. Name either one. Johnson. Yes. What recent president had a forgetful secretary named Rosemary Woods? Nixon. Yes. Name the U.S. president whose campaign slogan was Tippy Canoe and Tyler Two. Harrison. Yes. In 1902, a toy maker created a cuddly stuffed... Teddy bear. Roosevelt. Yes, that is it! Whoa! Wow! What a job. What a job. You know, you missed... And I know you know the one you missed. You only missed one. You got four in a row. You only missed one. Name the only U.S. president who has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Who was it? Ronald Reagan. Had to be. Had to be. <laughs> Listen, champ, you did it. You are in our final round. You're going to be battling it out with Doug for five thousand dollars go on back over there and get in place i gotta say goodbye to christy here christy it was a pleasure having you with us today on run for the money i'm going to give you one hundred dollars and we got some nice gifts for you back oh, thank you I had a really good you time. did thank you very much bye-bye christy steve and doug the final round battling it out for five thousand dollars stick around it gets more exciting we'll be right back come on over fellas come on Nicely done, Doug. Nicely done. Steve, very nicely done. Good job. Come on up here. And now, back to Bill Rafferty. Welcome back. Here we are. We are down to it. This is our final round where the two of you are going to play head-to-head -head for a prize of $5,000. So a lot of money available in this one. You need nine points or more to win the game, and here's how it works. I'm going to ask you a question that gradually gets easier, and at some point, you'll know the answer. But you may buzz in only when it's your turn. Now, Doug, you got into this round first, so the first decision is yours. If you decide to start, you'll be able to buzz in when the clock is in the four zone. If it gets down to three, then it's Steve's turn. Then, of course, it comes back to you. That four, three, two, one is really a clock. It starts counting down when I start reading the question. Now, each time the clock moves into a new zone, control passes to the other player. And remember, you may answer only when you have control. And if you're right, you're going to get the number of points that are showing. Now, to help you make your decision, Doug, I'm going to tell you that the subject of the first question is a TV star. For the audience at home? Interesting. Interesting. All right. It is time to decide. 
You can start out in control with the clock in the big four zone, or you can force your opponent, your decision, how do you want to play it? I'd like to start. Going to take it. Man yeah. handles his own destiny, so he's going to try and get it in the four zone. Good luck. The clock stops when you press your buzzer. Remember, it takes nine points or more to win the match. Here we go. A TV star. Time begins now. She was born in Mississippi in 1954. By the time she was 12, she was being paid for public speaking. After college, she went to Baltimore to co-host a TV talk show. Steve. Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey is right for three points. Whoa. Nicely done, Steve. You grabbed it right at the top. Three points for Steve. He is in the lead. That means that Doug is playing catch-up. The next decision is his. Let me tell you the subject of the next question is a motion picture legend. People at home. Doug? I'll let Steve start. <laughs> Pass it over to Steve. He wants to hear a little bit lesson. more of the question and hopefully did what Steve did. Pick it up in the three zone. Let's see how the strategy pays off. A motion picture legend. Time begins. Now, he was born in London in 1899 and grew up to become Steve. Lawrence Olivier? No, that is incorrect. It is not Lawrence Olivier. Control passes to Doug. More important than that, the rest of Steve's time plus the additional time go over to Doug. Doug could pick up four points right here. Time begins now. And grew up to become one of the most influential figures in the movies. As a young man, he landed a job as an art director in a movie studio and soon after graduated to directing. Early in his career, he won an Oscar for the film Rebecca. But he's best remembered... Steve. Alfred Hitchcock. Alfred Hitchcock is correct. The champ picks up two points. Ooh. Steve is in the lead. He's the returning champ. A three-time winner. Wants to win a fourth time. Wants to win a fifth time for $50,000. A lot at stake for this young man. Doug, again, you're playing catch-up. Let me tell you that the subject of the next question is a fictional character. Ladies and gentlemen at home, Doug, what are we going to do? I'm going to start. He's going to start. All right. A fictional character. Good luck. Time begins now. He was created in 1979 by an artist who first drew him on a placemat in an Italian restaurant. Since then, he's been featured in nearly 20 books, starred in three animated TV specials. That is Steve Garfield. Garfield is Ooh. correct for three. Garfield was the answer. The champ picks up three more points. He now has eight. First player, nine or more, is the champ. Steve is right there. Doug, you have a very important decision to make. You have yet to break the ice. Subject of the next question is a TV personality. Ladies and gentlemen at home. All right, Doug, here it is. What are we going to do? I have to go for it. He's got to go for it. Steve can win it in any zone that he answers correctly in. Doug has to answer this correctly. A TV personality. Time begins. Now, she was born in Germany in 1929. At 21, she went to Paris to study psychology. Later, she came to the U.S. and in 1961... Dr. Ruth Doug. Westheimer. Yes, Dr. Ruth Westheimer for four. <laughs> I don't know how you got that. I've got to be honest with you. I, that, that was a, just a little bit of information to get four points on, but you did the job you had to do. We've got Steve in the lead with eight. Doug has four. The decision is still his. He's playing catch-up. Subject to the next question is an artist. Ladies and gentlemen at home. Doug. I have to go for it again. He's going for it again. If he gets it in the four zone, we have a tie. we got a battle going on here. An artist. Time begins now. He was born in Europe in the 19th century. As a young man, he failed at several careers before becoming a painter. His early paintings were dark, somber scenes. Doug. Rembrandt. No, that is incorrect. Time and control passes over to Steve. If he answers this question correctly, he is a four-time champion. Time begins now. But after a trip to Paris to study art, his paintings became brighter. He produced hundreds of paintings. Steve. Picasso. No, that is incorrect. Control passes again. Over to Doug. He gets the rest of Steve's time. Time begins now. He produced hundreds of paintings, including A Starry Night and Sunflowers. But his... Doug. Vincent Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh is right for two. Woo. Bit of a tussle. Bit of a tussle taking place right now, huh? All right, Steve is in the lead with eight. Doug is playing catch-up with six. He's still battling it out here. Let me tell you now, Doug, subject of the next question is an actress. Ladies and gentlemen at home. 
Big decision, Doug. What are we going to do? I'll let Steve start. Interesting choice. Interesting choice. He's passing over to Steve, hoping that Steve does not get it in the four zone. He gets a little bit more information, grabs it in the three zone. Somebody's going to be the champion on this question, I have a feeling. An actress. Time begins now. She was born in 1949 in high school. She was a tomboy competing in swimming, softball, and track. Her striking good looks led to her modeling Steve. Jessica Lang? No, that is incorrect. Control and the time passes over to Doug. Time begins now. Her striking good looks led to the modeling career. And in 1968, she was voted Fashion Model of the Year. She began her acting career in the film The Last Picture Show. But, Steve, for the championship. Sybil Shepherd. Sybil Shepherd is right. not get any closer than that. This just doesn't. You knew it, too. Yeah. I saw you yeah. go for it, but Steve grabbed it right away. He's the repeating champion. He's just picked up $5,000. Unfortunately, I've got to say, this guy is the loser. What a player. Give him a round of applause. He's just for it. Very nicely done, Doug. It was a pleasure having you here with us on Run for the Money. And uh, we're going to give you $500. we got some nice Good. gifts for you backstage. Great, Thanks. great game. Listen, we're going to take a brief, brief break, bring back the champion, let you know how he's doing. Stick around. We'll be back in one moment. Nicely done. Really. <laughs> nice. Nice. Welcome back. I'm standing here with the champ. He's a four-day winner. It was not very easy for you to repeat today, was it? <laughs> it was a struggle. He won $5,000. That brings his total up to $20,000. Tomorrow, if he wins for his fifth day, not $25,000, $50,000. And you're going to have to wait till tomorrow to see it. I hope he gets some sleep. We'll see you tomorrow on Run for the Money. Bye-bye. Nice to see you guys. For the money is a Red Grundy production. Let's welcome your host, Henry Kelly. Thank you. Hello, thank you very much indeed. Welcome to Going for Gold, the start of a brand new quiz program. Now, throughout this series, contestants from all over Europe will be competing for the prize as European Quiz Champion. And what a prize and what a champion that's going to be. Because over the next 23 weeks, we're going to have contestants from 14 different countries. Now, you've seen today's contestants. Any one of them could be that champion, and they could win this prize. The series winner will fly to Seoul in Korea and spend two weeks discovering this fascinating country, enjoying the delights, sights and atmosphere of Southeast Asia's unique culture, an experience to remember. And you'll be there as athletes from all over the world strive to win gold. Accommodation, all meals and tickets to final events and the fabulous closing ceremony are included. A great prize for the series winner of Going for Gold. Yes. It certainly is a great prize. Okay, players? Now, at the start of every show, we play an elimination round. There are seven of you. I need only four to go through to the first round proper. The rules are easy. I'll ask a question as soon as you think you know. Buzz in. Here we go. Hands on the buzzers. Who am I? I am an author, mathematician, and photographer born in England in 1832. I produced two of the most famous books in English literature. One of them was written to amuse a little girl named Alice Liddell. <coughs> Scotland. Lewis Carroll. Lewis Carroll is correct. Scotland, you're in the first round. Well done. Right, we have our first person through to the next round. Hands on the buzzers again. I'm looking for three more. What am I? 
I am a large member of the cat family known for my strength and beauty. I am found only in Asia. My England. The tiger. The tiger is correct, England. You're in the first round. Two already through, two more to go. Hands on the buzzers, what is my name? I am a beverage popular throughout the world, made from cereal, grains, hops, water and yeast. <coughs> Netherlands. Beer. Beer is correct, Netherlands. You're in the first round. One more to go. Who am I? I was born in England in 1907 and made many stage appearances as a child. Joining the Old Vic in 1937, I played many Shakespearean roles. Among them, Austria. Lord Olivier. Lord Olivier is correct. You're in the first round. Well done indeed. Well, we have our first four contestants. We're sorry to lose Denmark, Sweden and Northern Ireland, but we will see you again tomorrow because on Going for Gold, all our contestants keep coming back each day until finally we have just four in the heat final at the end of the week. But now we have the first four in the first round. They come from Scotland, England, Netherlands and Austria and they're going for gold. Right, and there they are, our first four contestants through to the first round proper and going for gold. Let's get to know them a little bit better. First of all, Hans Manns from Austria. You're a retired diplomat, I know. Hans, where did you actually serve your country? Well, in Trieste, Düsseldorf, Canberra, Bucharest and Copenhagen. What a good record. Canberra, that's of course uh, Australia. That's yes. a long way from home for you. Yes, what was it like there, Hans? Very, very, very nice. Did you learn to speak Australian when you were there? A little bit. Can you do any? Oh, we've got a bunch of time now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hans, and I know that you, you actually were present at the 1956 Olympic Games. Yes, at Melbourne. What do you remember best about it? Well, it will warm the cockles on your green Irish heart when I tell you that I saw Ron Delaney win the 1500 well meter done. race. Well done, well done, Hans. Well, I hope that you have very good success and enjoy yourself today in the programme. Thank you so Thank much. Hans. Well, our successful contestant from the Netherlands is Jakob Meyer. Jakob, um, do you wear clogs by any chance, Jakob? No? Uh, not nowadays, but I used to Did when you? I was young, yes. Did you? I was, I, mean, living, I was living on a farm, and it's quite common in Holland to wear clogs when you're living on a farm. Why is that? It's quite safe, actually. If you're handling cattle, and that cattle is planning to stand on your feet, you're lucky to wear clogs. <laughs> <laughs> really. All right, well, Jakob, the very best luck to you in today's program. Hope you do very, you very well. Thank you very much. All right. The first, the first Englishman to answer a question correctly was Ian McChesney. Have I pronounced it correctly, Ian? Yes, that's right. It's, yes. a, it's, it's originally an Irish name, isn't it? It is, yes. yes Ian, I know that you are a biologist uh, mm -hmm. uh, by, by training and, and by teaching. Yeah. Any hobbies outside that? Well, I play squash. Um, Do you? Not very well at the moment. Uh, I've been dropping down over recent months, so I've taken up a bit of weight training. A bit of weight training, just, just in the just spare time. In the, in spare, the spare time, time yes. All right, well, I hope the grey cells are, are well trained for today, Ian. Yeah, hope you do very well in the course of the programme, Ian. Right. And last, uh, indeed, the first man to get here, Richard Leslie from Scotland. Richard is a university student specialising in what, Richard? Uh, well, this year I'm doing international relations and German. International relations and German? What yeah. do you want to be? Uh, I'm not too sure at this moment. <laughs> well, w w international relations and foreign languages. Any yes. other foreign languages? Uh, yes, I've been learning Russian last year, but I'm going to swap that for Spanish this year. So I hope to be working abroad. Sometime. Good man. It, it sounds as if you have a diplomatic career coming up. Maybe get a couple of tips from hands. Anyway, I hope you do very well in today's programme. Richard Leslie. All right, well, let's get a step closer to finding today's champion. In this round, contestants, the questions will be worth one, two or three points. They're in categories. The value of them will decide, uh, depend on what you pick after a one-point general knowledge question. Hands on the buzzers. General knowledge for one point. In 1966, Frank Sinatra dooby-dooed his way to... <coughs> Ian. My way? Is not the correct answer. To the top of the charts with a hit song called what? <coughs> Jakob. Strangers in the Night. Strangers in the Night is the correct answer. <coughs> right. Jakob, you're off the mark with one point. The category is Places Select. Two points. A two-point question. On which sea has Turkey its southern coastline? <coughs> Jakob. Black, the Black Sea. It is not the Black Sea. <coughs> Hans. The Mediterranean. The Mediterranean Sea is correct. Well done, Hans, for two points. Hans, the category is Science. Select. Two. 
a two-point question. Would W score? A polygon with three sides is called a what? Triangle. Hands. It's called a triangle. triangle. Very well answered indeed. Hands. That puts you on to four points, Hands. The category is food. Select. Two. Two for a win. If you like your pasta cooked on the firm side, you... Hands. Al dente. Al dente is absolutely right before I'd even ask the question. And you're in the next round, Hands. Very well done indeed. Right, candidates, you've seen already how quickly Hans has got through to the next round with six points. Jakob is the only other one with a point. Richard and Ian yet to score. Hans and the buzzers, there is a general knowledge question for one point, which is the sixth month of the year. <coughs> Richard. July. Is incorrect. <coughs> Jakob. June. June is correct. <laughs> Jakob, the category is wars. Select. Two points, please. Two points. What was the colourful nickname of the German ace flyer Manfred von... <coughs> Richard. The Red Baron. The Red Baron is correct, Richard. <laughs> Richard, the category is politics. Select. Uh, two points, please. A two point question. When Richard Nixon finally resigned, he sent his letter of resignation to the then Secretary. <laughs> Richard. No, it's gone out of my head. It's gone out of your head. To the then Secretary of State, who was that? <laughs> Ian. Kissinger. Kissinger is correct, Ian. Ian, the category is Hollywood films. All three of you are on two points. Select. Three points, please. A three-point question. Name the classic film in which Lauren Bacall showed Bogart how to whistle. <coughs> Richard. The Maltese Falcon. The Maltese Falcon is wrong, Richard. <coughs> Jacob. Casablanca. Casablanca is wrong. It was to have and have not. General knowledge for one point. Which book is the old-time bestseller in the English-speaking world? <coughs> Richard. Bible. The Bible is correct, Richard. Puts you on three points, Richard. The category is health matters. Select. Uh, one, please. A one-point question. For the intended prevention of which very common bodily disorder is fluoridation of water? <coughs> Ian. Tooth decay. Tooth decay is absolutely correct. <laughs> Ian, that puts you on three. The category is poetry. Select. Two points, A two-point question. What country originated the 17-syllable poems called haiku? <coughs> Richard. Japan. Japan did indeed, Richard. <laughs> Richard, the category is music. You're five points to Ian's three and Jacob's two. Select, Richard. One point, Just please. a one point for a win. Grand, upright and square are three types. <laughs> Ian. Piano. Piano is the correct answer. <laughs> right, Ian, that brings you up to four. The category is religion. Select. It's got to be a two, please. It's got Harry. to be a two for a win for either you or Richard. By what familiar name do we know the Asian religion founded by Prince See the Harta. <coughs> Ian. Islam? It's not Islam. <coughs> Richard. Shinto. It's not Shinto. The answer I was looking for was Buddhism. General knowledge for one point. Richard, this would give you a win. According to Alexander Pope's familiar line, who rush in where angels... <coughs> Richard. Fools. Fools they do and you're in the next round, Richard. Well done. Well done. Right, Ian, that leaves yourself and Jakob, yourself and Ian, to fight it out. Ian, you have four points. Jakob, you have two. General knowledge for one. What name is given to twins born joined together? <coughs> Jakob. Siamese. Siamese is correct. You're on three points. <laughs> right, Jakob, the category is sport. Select. Three points. three points. Three points for a win for either of you. Key question. In what sport will you see participants performing jerks, snatches, presses? <coughs> Ian. Weightlifting. Weightlifting. You got one on your own subject. You're in the next round. Well done, Ian. Jakob, we're very sorry to lose you, but we'll, of course, see you tomorrow. Right now, it's time to get a step even closer to finding today's champion as I'm going for gold. We now play four in a row. And here we go with four in a row. Now, in this round, it's a solo round. It's just you against the clock. I need two winners for our final head-to-head. -head. Hans, you were the first person to get into this round. Let me show you the categories that are available to you. Greek mythology, European countries, creepy crawlies, and art. Hans, which category would you like? European countries. You'd like European countries. Hans, will you come and join me here, please, for your solo round, and I'll tell you how four in a row works. You know, Hans, I had somehow an idea you'd pick European countries. You've served in so many of them. Yes, quite a, quite a lot of them. Quite a lot of them. How many years service in, in the diplomatic service, Hans? Uh, 37. 37. And, and you have a family. Have any of yes. them followed you into the service? Yes, my son does. Good. You must be very proud of him. Oh, I'm... All right. Well, well done, Hans. 
Now you've got here so far, let me explain to you how four in a row works. Your aim, obviously, is to score four in a row. You'll score one point for each correct answer, but if you get a wrong answer, you'll go back down to zero. We will put 40 seconds on the clock for you, and you will have all that 40 seconds to answer correctly four in a row. Don't worry if you don't get them all, because we will credit you with your highest score. Hans, are you ready? Yes. On European countries, your time starts now. In which country is the ancient sanctuary of Olympia? Greece. It is. Which country, starting with C, shares a border with Hungary? Czechoslovakia. It does. What is the tiny principality of Monaco's chief industry? Tourism. Tourism is correct. Of which country is Mount Ararat now the highest point? Russia. No, it's Turkey. Oh, Turkey. 95% of which European countries' population are Magyars? Uh, Hungary. Correct. In which large Italian city did the illegal organization known as the Camorra have its origins? Napoli. It did. On which European peninsula is Yugoslavia located? Balkans. It is. Which nation claims ownership of the island of Mallorca? Spain. Oh, you were just too late, Hans. Hard luck. You got it right, but out of time. You didn't score four in a row, but you did score three. Thank you. Well All right, Richard. Select your category. Uh, Greek mythology, please. Greek mythology. Right, Richard, will you come and join me here, please, for your solo round? Are you a Greek scholar? Apart from, I know you're a linguist. You're a Greek scholar? Not really. A bit of general knowledge, perhaps, comes yes. into play here. All right, Richard, you know the rules. We'll put 40 seconds on the clock for you now. You'll have the full 40 seconds to answer four in a row correctly. Your time starts now. What was the name of the king whose touch turned everything to gold? Midas. It was. The centaurs were half man and half what? Horse. They were. The abduction of which character caused the Trojan War? Helen of Troy. It did. What was the Greek name for the Roman god Bacchus? Dionysius. It's correct. You scored four in a row, Richard. Very well done. Well done. Ian, you have two left. Creepy Crawlies are art. Select. I think it's got to be Creepy Crawlies. It's got to be Creepy Crawlies. Ian, come on here and join me for your solo round. You know the rules by now. Do you like Creepy Crawlies, Ian? Uh, some. Uh, some. Some. Have you travelled much when you see them in foreign parts? Uh, one or two places in Europe, yeah. One Greece thing. was particularly bad for charters <laughs> and various other right. things. Right, well, let's hope the questions don't cause you any problems at all, Ian. Okay. We'll put 40 seconds on the clock for you. Your time starts now. Name the insect which carries maladies such as encephalitis, malaria, and yellow fever. Mosquito. It does. What kind of insect is a red admiral? A butterfly. It is. Toad, plant, and bed are all types of what insect? Bug. That is correct. The mantid is a creature better known by another name. What is it? A praying mantis. A praying mantis is correct, Ian. And you've scored four in a row. Very well done. Oh. Well, a fast and furious round. If we look at the scores, we'll see hands. You only managed to score three, but we will see you tomorrow. You. And Richard and Ian, both absolutely perfect. Both four in a row. So will you come across here and join me, please, guys? And we'll both go for gold. <laughs> Now we're down to with our final round, our head-to-head, -head, and you need nine points to win the game, and here's how it works. I'm going to ask a question which gets progressively easier. You may buzz in only when it's your turn. Now, Richard, you got into this round first, so the first decision is yours. If you decide to start, you'll be able to buzz in when the clock is in the four zone. When it gets down to the three zone, it's going to be Ian's turn. And then it will come back to you. So that four, three, two, one is really a clock. It starts counting down when I start reading the question. Each time the clock moves into a new zone, control passes to the other player. And remember, you may answer only when you have control. If you're right, you score the number of points that are showing. Now, to help you make up your decision, I will tell you that the subject is mythology. And there, for our audience at home, there's an extra little clue. Right? It's time for you to decide. Um, Richard, you can decide to start in control with the clock in the big four zone, or you can force your opponent to start. How do you want to play it? Will you pass or play? I'll play. You'll play. Okay, good luck to you. The clock stops when you hit the buzzer. It takes nine points or more to win. Here we go. Time starts now. According to one mythology, I was the first woman on earth. I was created from land and water to make an evil being all men would desire. <coughs> Richard. Pandora. Pandora is the correct answer. Well done. Answered in the four zone, which puts you on four points. That means, Ian, that you are playing what we call catch-up. The subject of the next question is a natural substance. Here's a clue for you watching at home. 
Ian, will you play or pass? I'll play, please. You'll play, you. right? Your time starts now. I'm a member of the grass family, distantly related to wheat, oats and barley. However, unlike these crops, I... Corn. ...is not the right answer. Richard, you have control. Your time continues now. I usually grow quite tall, sometimes as high as 130 feet. In some countries, people live in... Richard. Sunflower? It is not sunflower. The, the wrong answer. Ian, you have control. Time continues now. My delicate shoots are used in Chinese cooking and I make excellent fishing poles. Perhaps most famous... Ian. Bamboo. Bamboo is the correct answer. <laughs> answered, answered in the three zone, which still means, Ian, that you are playing catch-up. The subject is religion. Here's a clue for you watching at home. All right, Ian, will you play or pass? I'll play, please. You'll play, all right. Your time on religion starts now. I'm an important festival during which people attend church and participate in religious ceremonies. In most countries, I'm actually celebrated on Sunday. My story comes from the Bible and Christians everywhere... Passover? Ian, it is not the Passover. Richard, you have control. Your time continues now. Christians everywhere celebrate me with great rejoicing. Easter. Richard, Easter is the correct answer. Very well done, Richard. Answered in the three zone, which means you're on seven to your three, Ian. The subject is 20th century figures. Here's an extra clue for you watching at home. Ian, will you play or pass? I'll play. You're going to play, Ian. All right, your time starts now. I was born in Germany in 1894. As a young man, I soon became involved in the post-World War I politics of my country. <laughs> Adolf, Adolf Hitler. It is not Adolf Hitler. Richard, you have control. I took part in the Munich Uprising of 1923. Richard. Hess. Hess is the correct answer. Answered in the four zone, which brings you the level of gut line and you're today's winner. And Richard, not only have you won and two to the heat final, we'd like you to accept this memento of your achievement, which is exclusive to all winning contestants on Going for Gold. Very well done, Richard. Ian, very sorry to lose you. You played very well indeed. Don't worry, you'll be back tomorrow. Yes, the lads congratulate each other. And we'll be back again tomorrow when we hope you'll be watching us here as we're all going for gold. Bye bye now. Well done, well done. A good game. in association with Super Channel and the BBC, Going for Gold is a Red Grundy production. Jean-François est notre champion. Il doit vaincre cinq fois ses adversaires pour empocher le jackpot qui est ce soir de 30 000 francs. Evelyne. Pascal. Catherine sont ses challengers dans « Question pour un champion !» Présenté par Julien Lepers. Hey Merci. Merci beaucoup, ça fait plaisir. Madame, mademoiselle, monsieur, bonsoir. Et comment vous dire le bonheur que j'ai de vous retrouver pour cette nouvelle émission, ce nouveau jeu sur FR3 tous les soirs, de 18h30 à 19h. Je voudrais dire un bonsoir chaleureux aussi à nos candidats qui sont venus de toutes les régions de France pour devenir notre champion et tenter le jackpot qui ce soir est de 30 000 francs. Alors les caméras d'RFR3 vont se braquer sur Jean-François qui a été le grand champion de toutes ces sélections. Je voudrais qu'on le regarde bien en gros plan. Voilà Jean-François, grand champion, il a réussi les sélections. Vous avez fait très fort Jean-François, il paraît. Oui, oui, ça a bien ça marché vraiment pour moi. très très bien passé. Vous êtes là ce soir, tant mieux. Euh, je voudrais que vous vous présentiez un petit peu plus. Vous avez 25 ans je crois. Hein voilà. Oui. Et vous êtes ingénieur en électronique, c'est bien ça C'est cela, depuis quelques mois j'ai fini mes études il y a quelques temps, c'est tout. Bon, ça consiste en quoi ingénieur électronique voilà, je travaille sur des transistors, des tubes hyperfréquents. Et... Oui, enfin, c'est très compliqué, c'est très fort en tout cas, balèze. En tout cas, euh, du fond du cœur, je vous souhaite bonne chance, Jean-François. Comme je sais que vous êtes très très fort, nous vous avons choisi des challengers euh, sérieux. Nous avons d'abord Evelyne. Evelyne, je viens de Villeneuve-les-Avignon, je suis mère au foyer. Pascal, je suis retraité, je viens de Montpellier. 
Catherine, je suis hôtesse commerciale et je viens de Revel. Eh bien, je vous souhaite bienvenue dans cette émission Question pour un champion. Tous les trois. Evelyne, je voudrais vous connaître un petit peu mieux. Vous faites quoi dans la vie Vous êtes mère au foyer, je crois. Je suis mère au foyer, oui. Ça vous laisse le temps de regarder la télévision Absolument. Notamment absolument. FR3, vous allez vous habituer à Bien ce sûr. jeu. Question pour un champion, FR3, 18h30 et 19h. Je vous souhaite Bien bonne sûr. chance. Merci. Bonne chance du fond du cœur, Evelyne. Merci. Pascal, vous, vous m'avez dit tout à l'heure que vous étiez retraité. Vous faisiez quoi avant J'étais animateur de vente, oui. après avoir, avoir fait une carrière militaire. D'accord. Et maintenant, je m'occupe de, de ma petite fille qui, que j'ai pratiquement élevée, enfin avec mon épouse. D'accord. Pascal, vous avez une, euh, je sais pas, une matière de prédilection, ben, vraiment un domaine dans lequel vous êtes le plus fort bon, je, Non, en euh, culture générale. Culture générale, ça tombe bien parce qu'il y aura beaucoup de questions de culture générale. Bonne chance, Pascal <rires> Catherine, vous êtes hôtesse commerciale, je crois. Oui, tout Alors à fait. Alors ça consiste en quoi Expliquez-moi ça un peu. Je vends des collections sur les foires, les expositions, dans les gares et dans les aéroports. Oui. Et vous, vous êtes forte en quoi dans les jeux, en général Tu peu tout. Aussi culture générale, j'ai l'impression. Je vous souhaite bonne chance, Catherine. Alors, vous êtes quatre pour ce premier jeu. Trois seulement seront qualifiés pour la phase suivante. Les trois premiers à atteindre neuf points pour cette première manche. On va démarrer tout de suite, je vais vous poser des questions à 1, 2 et 3 points. Attention, les mains sur le buzzer, vous me répondez rapidement, distinctement. Vous parlez bien fort, si vous avez la certitude d'avoir la bonne réponse, vous appuyez le plus rapidement possible sur le buzzer. Question à 1, 2 et 3 points, c'est parti. Combien de cercles entrelacés se trouvent sur le drapeau olympique Catherine. 5. Oui, joli. Pour 2 points, quel est le nom de la monnaie d'or frappée en Espagne à partir du 15e siècle et... Evelyne. Les scudos. Non, c'est une mauvaise réponse. Jean-François. Le pesette. Euh, non, c'est pas aussi. tout à fait ça. C'était le peso. Eh oui, c'est pas tout à fait ça. Je suis désolé. Euh, on va continuer avec une question à trois points. Qui a écrit le roman L'Adieu aux armes Evelyne. William Faulkner. Non. Hemingway. Attendez, non, non, je... appuyez encore, appuyez. Catherine. Hemingway. Oui, c'est ça. Ernest Hemingway, c'est bien. Question à un point. Qu'est-ce que le Kung Fu Un vêtement de soie, un repas ou un art martial Catherine Un art martial. Un art martial, bien joué. Bonne réponse. Pour deux points, quel était le meilleur d'Auguste Escoffier Quel était le métier d'Auguste Escoffier Evelyne Cuisinier. Cuisinier, c'est une bonne réponse. Bravo. Pour trois points, les Madis sont un peuple de quel continent Les Maldis. Madis sont un peuple de quel continent C'est pas... C'est trop tard, c'était l'Afrique. Question à un point. Quelles sont les trois couleurs du drapeau italien Pascal. Vert, blanc, rouge. Oui, bonne réponse. Bravo Pascal. Question à deux points. Quelle est l'unité de mesure de pression égale à 10 puissance 5 Pascal Jean-François. Une atmosphère. Non. Personne d'autre c'est fini, c'était le bar, tout simplement, Jean-François, vous le saviez, c'est sûr. Question à trois points. Quel peintre est mort à l'âge de 91 ans à Mougins en avril 1973 Jean-François. Pablo Picasso, oui Pour un point, quelle guerre éclate aux états unis à la suite des bombardements de Fort Sumter, Catherine, Catherine La guerre de sécession Oui, la guerre de sécession, oui Bien. Pour deux points, comment appelle-t-on la femme du Maharaja Catherine. La Maharani Oui, bonne réponse. On va faire un point sur les scores. Regardons un petit peu, c'est Catherine qui mène avec 8 points, suivi de Jean-François, 3 points, ensuite Evelyne, 2 points, et 1 point pour Pascal qui est un petit peu à la traîne. Catherine, c'est une question capitale que je vais vous poser là, car elle vaut 3 points. Si vous y répondez, vous êtes sélectionné pour le jeu suivant, les 4 à la suite. Bonne chance à tous sur cette question qui vaut 3 points. Quel nom a-t-on donné au bombardement de la Grande-Bretagne par l'aviation allemande en 1940 Personne Pascal, personne C'est le Blitz Question à un point. Quelle est la capitale de la Turquie Pascal. Ankara. Oui, bonne réponse. Question à deux points. Combien y a-t-il de joueurs sur la patinoire dans une équipe de hockey sur glace Jean-François. Cinq. Pardon Deux fois cinq. Non. Personne d'autre, c'est fini. Il y en a six. Question à trois points. Quel est le film fantastique et futuriste réalisé par Fritz Lang en 1927 Catherine. Métropolis Oui, c'est une bonne réponse. Vous êtes qualifiée. Vous êtes qualifiée, Catherine. 
On vous retrouve dans un moment pour le prochain jeu, 4 à la suite. Alors Pascal, Evelyne et Jean-François, on va garder vos scores, mais à partir de maintenant, je vais vous poser des questions qui valent 2 et 3 points, ça va aller beaucoup plus vite. Bonne chance aussi chez vous si vous nous regardez. Question à 2 points, on y va. Quelle est la phrase latine qui signifie « je vous salue Marie » Ave Marie. Pascal, on ne donne pas la réponse avant que je vous ai donné la parole. Pascal, je vous écoute. Ave Maria. Ave Maria, c'est une bonne réponse, bravo. Question à 3 points. Combien y a-t-il de kilomètres à parcourir dans un marathon Jean-François. 42. 42, c'est une bonne réponse, je l'accorde. 42, 195, oui. Je vous fais cadeau des 195. Hein. Question à 2 points. Quelle langue fut inventée par le linguiste polonais H.S. Zamenhof Pascal. L'espéranto. Oui Regardons un petit peu les scores ensemble. On a 6 euh, points, 6 points pour Jean-François, bien joué, 6 points pour Pascal, à égalité donc, et 2 points pour Evelyne qui a un petit peu de retard. Cette question-là vaut 3 points et peut être déterminante pour vous Pascal, et pour vous Jean-François, bonne chance. Comment appelle-t-on l'infusion préparée à partir des feuilles du théier Le thé. Evelyne, le thé bien sûr, oui, joli. <rires> Evelyne qui revient très fort, cette question vaut 2 points. Sur quel continent trouverez-vous Brazzaville et Luanda Pascal. Afrique. Oui, bien sûr, bonne réponse. Pour trois points, question capitale pour vous, Pascal et Jean-François. Qui dirigea le Faucon Maltais et l'honneur des Prizi Personne, c'était John Houston. Pour deux points, qu'est-ce que Thomas Edison a inventé en 1877 Jean-François, pour deux points Le phonogramme. Le phonographe. Le phonographe, c'est une bonne réponse, oui. J'ai peur. Vous êtes à égalité, la 8 partout, Jean-François, Pascal, égalité, 5 points pour Evelyne, question capitale, encore une fois, elle vaut 3 points. Dans quel domaine de l'art Matisse était-il célèbre Pascal Dans la peinture impressionniste. Dans la peinture impressionniste, c'est plus qu'il m'en faut, vous avez gagné, vous êtes sélectionné et qualifié pour le jeu suivant, bravo. C'est bien, Matisse, bien sûr, la peinture. Alors, à partir de maintenant, vous êtes tous les deux, Evelyne et Jean-François. Il y en a un des deux qui va être euh, éliminé tout à l'heure et l'autre qui sera sélectionné pour le jeu suivant, les quatre à la suite. Euh, je vous souhaite bonne chance, évidemment. Et à partir de maintenant, nous allons partir avec vos mêmes scores. À partir de maintenant, chaque question vaut trois points. Ça va aller très vite. Dans quel domaine, euh, ça je l'ai posé, si vous souffrez du score but, quelle est la vitamine qui vous est insuffisante La Evelyne. vitamine A. Non. Personne... Jean-François, c'était la vitamine C. Quel chanteur des Beatles a été assassiné à New York en décembre Evelyn. John Lennon. Oui, c'est une bonne réponse. John Lennon, bravo. Vous êtes à égalité tous les deux. Question capitale pour vous. Qui a été surnommé le chevalier sans peur et sans reproche Evelyn. Bayard. Bayard, c'est une bonne réponse. Bravo, vous êtes qualifié. Bravo, Evelyn. Jean-François, brillant, mais disons, euh, pas de chance aujourd'hui. Oui. Hein, C'est ce qu'on dira. Jean-François, euh, malgré tout, vous ne repartirez pas les mains vides. Je veux absolument que vous gardiez un bon souvenir de cette émission. Question pour un champion et vous repartez avec... Le cinéma a presque 100 ans. Pour tout savoir sur l'évolution du 7e art, Larousse vous offre ce formidable dictionnaire du cinéma, dans lequel vous trouverez 4700 articles, les fiches techniques de plus de 2000 films et 250 photos. Un livre indispensable. C'est un beau cadeau, hein bravo euh, Jean-François. Alors, Evelyne, Pascal, Catherine, vous êtes tous les trois qualifiés pour quatre à la suite. Mais deux seulement parmi vous disputeront le face-à-face -face final. Il y en a un des trois qui va être éliminé tout à l'heure. Alors, il me reste à vous souhaiter, croyez-le bien, je le fais de tout cœur, bonne chance. Bonne chance à vous trois et que le meilleur gagne. Votre ennemi dans ce jeu, sachez-le bien, ça va être la montre. Ça va être le temps, le chronomètre. Vous jouez vraiment contre lui. Vous avez été, ma chère Catherine, la première candidate à être qualifiée pour ce jeu. Avant de commencer, voici les quatre catégories de questions que je vous propose. Les îles, littérature, héros et héroïnes et les animaux. Quelle est la catégorie que vous choisissez Héros et héroïnes. Alors, venez vite me rejoindre, Catherine, pour cette catégorie-là. Questionnaire héros et héroïne. Voici le principe, vous marquez un point pour chaque bonne réponse et votre objectif est d'en marquer quatre, mais quatre 
à la suite, évidemment. Hein. Chaque erreur vous ramène à zéro. Affichons tout de suite les 40 secondes. Voilà, 40 secondes au chronomètre. Vous avez ces 40 secondes pour parvenir à 4 à la suite. Mais si vous échouez, ma chère Catherine, nous prenons en compte votre meilleur score. Vous êtes prête Prête. Catherine, attention. 40 secondes, héros et héroïne. Top départ, quel héros est associé à une lampe merveilleuse dans un célèbre Aladdin. conte Oui, Florestan est un personnage de quel opéra de Beethoven Je passe. Et c'était Fidelio, qui est le symbole du gamin de Paris dans Les Misérables Gavroche. Oui, quel est le nom du héros du mystère de la chambre jaune de Gaston Leroux Je passe. Rouletabille, qui y est allé chercher Eurydice aux enfers Je sais plus. Orphée, quels sont les noms des trois mousquetaires compagnons de D'Artagnan euh, Ar Arti... Je sais plus non plus. Attends, Porto, Porto Aramis, qui a écrit les caves du Vatican Je sais pas. André J, dans quel personnage se transforme l'aimable Dr Jekyll Mr Hyde. Oui, quel personnage de fiction fut accusé en 1912 d'avoir inspiré les actes de la bande à Bono H.E. Wells Non, Fantôme Mas. Catherine, vous n'avez pas fait. 4 à la suite. Vous avez à votre actif une bonne réponse et on vous applaudit, Catherine. Merci. Pascal, vous voyez que ça va très très vite, hein. là, là, il faut vraiment s'accrocher. Pascal, c'est votre tour maintenant, il nous reste en catégorie euh, les îles, euh, littérature et les animaux, quel est votre choix Les îles. Alors venez vite nous rejoindre, je vais vous interroger sur les îles. Vous aviez l'air euh, très sûr de vous Pascal, vous connaissez bien les îles On va essayer. Concentrez un petit peu, là, je vous sens concentré. Non, non, pas du tout, pas si, du si, tout. Si, non, si, 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 si. Pascal, attention, c'est sérieux, 40 <rire> secondes au chronomètre, on ne plaisante plus. Bonne chance pour cette catégorie, les îles. Top départ, quelle est la grande île française située au nord de la Sardaigne La Corse. Oui. Quel îlot de la baie de San Francisco est une ancienne prison fédérale Alcatraz. Oui. Sur quelle île est situé le sultanat de Brunei Euh... Je passe. C'est Bornéo. À quel pays d'Europe appartient l'archipel Svalbard Je passe. Norvège. Quel pays est pour capitale Port-au-Prince Haïti. Oui. Quelle île est séparée du Canada par le détroit de Belle-Île saint pierre miquelon Non, Terre-Neuve. Quelle île de la Méditerranée est pour capitale La Valette Malte. Oui. Dans quelle colonie britannique se trouve le territoire de Kowloon et les New Territories Je passe. Hong Kong. Quel état des états unis est un archipel situé dans l'océan Pacifique Je passe. Hawaï. Dans quel océan sont situés les Seychelles L'océan Indien. Vous n'avez pas fait euh, quatre bonnes réponses, mon cher Pascal, mais vous avez à votre actif trois bonnes réponses et on vous applaudit, Pascal. Alors, euh, Evelyne, c'est à votre tour maintenant. Qu'est-ce qu'il nous reste Il nous reste catégorie littérature et les animaux. C'est vous qui décidez. Littérature. Littérature. Alors, venez vite nous rejoindre pour cette euh, catégorie littérature. Questionnaire littérature, vous êtes fort Oh non. Pas tellement. Je, hein. je, je, les enfin, animaux, nuls, alors. Euh, oui, c'était la catégorie. Trop de mots, il hein, faut choisir le moindre. Hein. Bon. Donc, euh, choisir alors, littérature. Attention, Evelyne. 40 secondes au chronomètre. Je vais vous interroger. Je vous souhaite vraiment bonne chance. Merci. Littérature. Top chrono. Quel est le nom du fils d'Adam et Ève qui tue à son frère Hein oui, quelle romancière française a eu un grand succès à 19 ans grâce à son roman Bonjour Tristesse François Sagan. Oui, quel est l'auteur de la Divine Comédie Dante. Oui, quel est l'auteur du Cri de la Victoire et d'Exodus dont le prénom est Léon Léon. Léon. Je passe. Uris, quel était le prénom de l'écrivain américain Steinbeck John. Oui, qui sont les deux frères qui ont donné leur nom à une académie et un prix littéraire Goncourt. célèbre Goncourt, oui. Quel écrivain américain est l'auteur de Sur la route et Big Sur Steinbeck Non, c'était Jack Kerouac. À qui doit-on les méditations métaphysiques parues en 1647 On s... Non, je passe. C'était Descartes. Qui est l'auteur de la pièce Tartuffe Molière. Oui, c'était Molière, bien sûr. Evelyne, vous n'avez pas fait euh, quatre bonnes réponses, mais vous avez fait trois bonnes réponses et on vous applaudit, Evelyne. C'est un beau résultat. Evelyne, vous allez à votre place. Bravo pour ces trois bonnes réponses. Pascal aussi de bonnes... Ah oui, Pascal, au fait. Vous êtes coquin, hein, parce que je vous ai attribué généreusement trois points. En fait, c'était deux bonnes réponses. Vous le reconnaissez ben, Je reconnais, absolument. Bon, d'accord. Deux bonnes réponses pour vous. Cela dit, ça ne change rien, puisque vous participerez tout à l'heure au face-à-face -face final. Catherine, on se sépare de vous. Vous avez été brillante. Merci. Hein, mais pas assez quand même pour rester avec nous. Je ne veux pas vous voir partir sans rien. Et vous gagnez, Catherine la Révolution française au jour le jour, un véritable reportage au cœur des événements qui transformèrent notre société. C'est ce que nous vous proposons avec ce très beau livre édité par Larousse, Chronique de la Révolution. Elle est jolie Catherine.
J'ai du mal à m'en séparer de Catherine, mais enfin bon, c'est le jeu, tant pis. Si vous voulez jouer avec nous, évidemment, et si vous voulez faire comme Pascal et Evelyne, participer au face-à-face -face final dans un moment, je vous propose de bien écouter, de bien regarder ce qui suit. Si vous souhaitez participer à notre jeu « Question pour un champion », écrivez-nous vite à « Question pour un champion », CEDEX 2850, 99 285, Paris Concours, sans oublier bien sûr de joindre à votre lettre une enveloppe timbrée avec vos noms et adresses. Et maintenant, retrouvons Julien Lepers pour le face-à-face -face final de « Question pour un champion ». Madame, mademoiselle, monsieur, voilà, et Pascal et Evelyne, nous arrivons à la dernière étape de notre jeu. Avec ce face-à-face -face final, à l'issue duquel on connaîtra le champion du jour. Alors, je vais vous poser, Pascal et Evelyne, une question qui progressivement devient plus facile. Dès que vous connaissez la réponse, vous appuyez sur le buzzer qui est juste en face de vous. Il y a 3000 francs en jeu et le vainqueur sera celui de vous deux qui atteindra 9 points, je dis bien 9 points, le premier. Mais attention, vous ne pouvez prendre la main qu'à votre tour. Autrement dit, Evelyne, vous avez la priorité à vous de prendre la première décision. Si vous choisissez de commencer, vous prenez la main quand le chronomètre est dans la zone 4. Dès qu'il arrive dans la 3, c'est au tour de Pascal. Puis c'est encore à vous, Evelyne, en zone 2. Et enfin de nouveau à vous, Pascal, en zone 1. C'est vraiment un chronomètre. Et le décompte démarre dès que je commence à lire la question. Dès que le chronomètre change de zone, la main passe à l'autre joueur. Et rappelez-vous, vous ne pouvez répondre que lorsque vous avez la main. Si vous répondez, Pascal et Evelyne, correctement, vous marquez les points affichés. Pour vous aider à prendre votre décision, je peux vous dire que le sujet de la question concernée est un sujet littérature, avec une indication qui s'affiche chez vous pour vous permettre de vous mettre sur la voie et jouer avec nous, bien sûr. Bonne chance chez vous. Evelyne, votre décision, vous je, prenez la main Je prends la main. Vous prenez la main, attention. Bonne chance pour cette question littérature. 20 secondes. Top chrono, nous sommes deux personnages qui vont inspirer des écrivains, des chorégraphes et des musiciens. Notre histoire trouve son origine dans un récit de Xénophon d'Éphèse. Nous sommes connus par une pièce de Shakespeare qui porte nos deux prénoms, originaires de Vérone. Nos patronymes sont mon... Roméo. Ah, attendez, Pascal. Roméo et Juliette. C'est une bonne réponse, Roméo et Juliette, bravo. Bien. Pascal, vous avez répondu dans la zone des trois points, vous gagnez donc trois points. Je rappelle que c'est le premier des deux qui arrive à neuf qui gagne. Et nous continuons avec une question de géographie. Un élément qui peut vous mettre sur la voie, qui s'affiche chez vous. Voilà qui est fait votre décision, Evelyne. Je passe. Vous passez la main, la main passe à Pascal. Attention, Pascal, si vous répondez dans la zone des 4 points, c'est-à-dire très rapidement, dès le début de la question, vous marquez 4 points. Bonne chance, 20 secondes, une question de géographie. Top chrono, je suis la principale ville de mon pays. C'est la volonté de l'empereur Constantin qui me transforma en capitale mondiale. Les Ottomans font de moi le centre de leur empire, plus connu pour avoir porté les noms de... Evelyne. Byzance. C'est une mauvaise réponse. La main passe. La main passe à Pascal. Pascal, attention. Géographie, on continue. Top chrono. Les Ottomans font de moi le centre de leur... Pascal. Ankara. Non, c'est une mauvaise réponse. La main passe. La main passe à Evelyne. Evelyne peut répondre à partir de ce... Top chrono. Plus connu pour avoir porté les noms de Byzance et Constantinople. Je me suis situé sur... Istanbul. Evelyne, vous me dites... Ist Istanbul. Istanbul. C'est une bonne réponse. Bravo. Vous l'aviez peut-être trouvé euh, chez vous. On continue avec une question qui va concerner un homme célèbre, un élément qui s'affiche encore chez vous. Et la décision tout à l'heure pour Evelyne, voilà qui est fait. Evelyne, votre décision. Je prends. Vous prenez la main. Je Très prends. bien, bonne chance. 20 secondes au chronomètre, un homme célèbre. Top chrono, je suis né en Asie, dans une famille de paysans. 1893, en 1919, j'ai obtenu un poste de... Evelyne. Joseph Kessel. Non, c'est une mauvaise réponse. La main passe. La main passe à Pascal. Pour Pascal... Top chrono. En 1919, j'ai obtenu un poste de bibliothécaire dans une université. J'y ai rencontré certains leaders politiques et découvert le marxisme. J'ai participé... Pascal. Euh... La main passe. La main passe à Evelyne. Evelyne qui peut répondre à partir de ce top chrono. J'ai participé à la création du parti communiste de mon pays. J'ai pris la tête d'une longue marche. J'ai proclamé... Evelyne. Mao tse -tung. Oui, bonne réponse. Mao tse -tung. Bravo. On va continuer avec une question de science. Un élément encore chez vous qui s'affiche pour vous mettre sur la voie. 
Voilà qui est fait et la décision de Pascal cette fois-ci. Passe. Vous passez, c'est Evelyne Calama, 20 secondes au chronomètre, question de science. Top chrono, je suis un phénomène naturel. Le premier qui réussit à m'expliquer fut Descartes. J'apparais sous certaines conditions car je résulte de la réfraction et la réflexion du soleil dans certains nuages par temps pluvieux. Je suis un météore en forme d'arc présentant les couleurs du spectre. Mais... Pascal. L'arc-en-ciel. Oui, c'est une bonne réponse. C'est bien. Alors, on va faire le point un petit peu. Evelyne, 5 points. Pascal, 6 points. C'est le premier qui arrive à 9, qui gagne et qui devient le champion du jour. De question pour un champion. Pascal, si vous répondez bien à la question qui vient, eh bien, vous êtes le champion du jour. Attention, question cinéma. Un élément encore qui s'affiche chez vous et qui peut vous aider sans doute. Voilà qui est fait. Votre décision, Evelyne. Je prends. Vous gardez la main. Très bien. 20 secondes. Question capitale. Cinéma, top chrono, je suis né à New York en 1918, je deviens danseuse professionnelle à 12 ans. En 1935, je tourne mon premier film, l'un de mes cinq maris a pour nom, Orson Welles. Les années 40, voient mon ascension euh, s'affirmer durant la... Pascal. Pascal Taylor. Non, c'est une mauvaise réponse, la main passe à Evelyn. Pour Evelyn, top chrono, les Rit... années 40, voient mon ascension s'affirmer durant la... Evelyn. Rita Hayworth. Oui, c'est une bonne réponse, Rita Hayworth. C'est bien. Sportivement, Pascal vous applaudit, euh, Evelyne. Attention, on continue. Cette fois-ci, une question pop-musique avec une indication chez vous, si vous en avez besoin, je ne sais pas. Et la décision de Pascal Je passe. Vous passez. C'est donc Evelyne qui part avec la main et 20 secondes au chronomètre. Pop-musique, bonne chance. Top chrono, nous formons un groupe britannique qui a plusieurs fois... Ch... Evelyne... Les Beatles. Oui, les Beatles, vous êtes championne Oui, bravo On est content, ça. Evelyne, hein. vous êtes la championne du jour. Elle est contente et sportivement, Pascal vous applaudit. Pascal, regardez, il se serre la main. Evelyne, Evelyne, voilà. Il s'embrasse, regardez comme c'est mignon. Je suis contente pour mes enfants. C'est vrai Oui. Ça fait plaisir, ça. Elle m'a dit d'une voix toute petite, toute fluette, je suis contente pour mes enfants, Evelyne, c'est bien. Alors attendez, je suis à vous dans un moment, Pascal, on va se séparer. Vous avez été très brillant, c'est le moins qu'on puisse dire, mais pas tout à fait quand même, elle était difficile oui, à battre. Oui, hein. oui très très difficile, parce que bon, ben, euh, disons que la dernière question, je ne l'ai pas prise parce que je ne suis pas euh, yé yé yé, yé oui, oui, oui. bon ben... Euh... Écoutez, bon, le résultat est là, de toute manière, non. vous n'allez pas partir sans rien. Non. Écoutez ce que vous avez gagné, Pascal. 72 117 mots, un ouvrage indispensable pour la maîtrise de la langue française, pour améliorer votre culture générale. Le formidable dictionnaire encyclopédique vous est offert par Larousse. Et vous appelez une Pascal. C'est un bon cadeau. Hein. Alors attention, Evelyne, vous avez 5 secondes. Je n'ose pas vous regarder, je regarde les téléspectateurs. Vous avez... 5 secondes pour prendre votre décision. Soit vous partez, vous partez avec les 3000 francs que vous avez gagnés, ou soit vous le, les remettez en jeu. Demain, vous tenterez les 6000 francs. Demain, le jackpot sera de 31 000 francs et vous vous rapprocherez du jackpot puisque vous aurez le jackpot à la fin des euh, 5 émissions et de 5 victoires. Votre décision, je ne sais pas, mais vous avez 5 secondes pour réfléchir. Soit vous restez avec nous, vous repartez demain, ou soit vous prenez les 3000 francs. 5 secondes. Evelyne Ben je reste, hein, ce n'est qu'un jeu. Hein. J'aime ça J'aime ça Le jackpot de demain est de 31 000 francs. A demain pour un autre question pour un champion avec Evelyne. Au revoir, merci.